my goodness right gracious. Right this is amazing. Oops, man. Back to Universal Orlando. What's up, Maine Mafia? It is a very cold and rainy day here in Central Florida. We are headed to Harry Potter celebration for the very last day. There's a lot to do today, and my family's in town. All right, we've made it in the park. There's Papa Maine, Mama Maine, Sister Maine. Jimmy Fallon's looking quite nice. Check out these awesome chalk drawings here in Central Park. Incredible. Look at this incredible fandom. King's Cross Station. We might be riding the Hogwarts Express a little later. Today is a perfect day to get a Gryffindor scarf. Well, I believe this is a new spell. There's actually two different spells in this one. Oh, it's like it's blowing air into the furnace. So it was a little bit of a wait, about five, 10 minutes, but we finally got some warm butter beer. Oh, that's so good. Gringotts is 15 minutes right now, and I think I left some galleons in my vault. I just want to live in here. Every time I look at these goblins, I feel like I did something wrong. Okay, please. What was that? The Weasley's wildfire whiz bangs. Fireworks from my brother's friend, George. Dude, what are you doing here? This is my office, Mordak. The question is, what are you doing here? Mm. Roller coaster ride with sudden and dramatic acceleration. You must be at least 42 inches in height to ride. Unless you are a goblin. Alright mom, so how did you feel about that drop? Was it your favorite? Um, no. <laughs> we sat in the very back, so yeah. if you sit in the very back of Gringotts, <laughs> they push you higher up, yeah. so then that drop is more intense. So here's something that I actually learned recently. It's kind of like a hidden Easter egg. Since Jaws, the whole attraction actually used to be over here in Diagon Alley, some of the wood from these telescopes is actually made from the same wood of one of the Jaws boats on the ride. Check it out, they got the shrunken head talking in the window. So these are pretty cool. Sponsored by Coca-Cola. It's a recharge your cell phone. So you come here, you press the little iPad thing, and you put your cell phone in here, and just come back for it later. Look, they got a bunch of different cords that you can use. The current wait for Harry Potter Expo is 120 minutes. Might as well. This little area is pretty cool. If you wait a separate wait, you can actually get You're sorted. Kidding. Yes, no question. Yeah. You belong in Slytherin. Slytherin. It can only be Hufflepuff. Congratulations. Hufflepuff has drained a very terrific witch. We finally made it. This definitely looks different from last year. Here are the outfits that were actually used in Fantastic Beasts. Here we go. Maybe we get 10 points for Gryffindor. Somebody's going to scold me in the comments. It's five points. We need you on the team. <laughs> we are signing up for a raffle right now where apparently you can win an entire set of Harry Potter books. Pretty cool. People are coloring an entire Hogwarts over here. Headed into the Warner Brothers studio tour. It's about an hour wait. If you look on the ground, you actually go to follow the spiders and they lead you to something pretty cool. You can see them leading into this room. This is cool. We're continuing to follow the spiders. Now they created a lot of creatures for the films. The Basilisk, Buckbeak, Aragog, pretty much any creature that you can think of. One of the goblins was Griphook, played by Warwick Davis. The Monster Book of Monsters. Everything was actually used in the film. The animatronic fox. 
guys know? It's amazing. Was an animatronic? I did not. No. Oh my goodness gracious. This is amazing. I will tell you one thing. They are not playing around with Aragog. You kind of get in there, take a picture, and get out. We're exiting through where else? The gift shop. That expo was super awesome. What do you think, Angela? I loved it. I don't really know what I'm supposed to say, but till I figure it out, let's sing today. You've been waiting for a long time, right? Yeah. You guys want to see some movie stars, am I right? I don't know. Who wants to see some movie stars? He's played cunning goblins and everyone's favorite charms professor. Please welcome to the stage, Mr. Warwick Davis. As Harry Potter's friend and fellow Dumbledore Army member, please welcome to the panel, Mr. Matthew Lewis. First time here at a celebration of Harry Potter, the one and only Mr. Jason Isaacs. The man who brilliantly brought Draco to life on the big screen, Mr. Tom Felton. <laughs> now we also have some very important people out in the crowd who are going to help us facilitate some questions. Um, I have a question um, for Malfoy. Big or little? <laughs> Young, uh, junior. Playing that character, kind of being mean, how, how do you feel like you were able to do that and kind of channel that character when you're such a sweet young man? Thank you. I had three older brothers. They were all complete asses to me. What is your favorite female character in the Harry Potter series? You are right now. Where is she? I can't even... She... <laughs> I've got two daughters, and one of the reasons I think that they love the books, they love the films, is that they loved Hermione because she was smarter than everybody else. And she, didn't, she didn't play second fiddle to the boys, and uh, she wasn't there to make the boys look smarter. In fact, she, as far as I'm concerned, she's the strongest character in the whole thing. So that's what I like Mrs. Weasley. I thought she was lovely. <laughs> What's up with the goblins? Where's the lady goblins? Are they back at home? I mean, no wonder the goblins are all so moody. <laughs> um, I was meant to leave the room. The script just didn't have anything for me to say. And I was dismissed by Dumbledore. He said, thank you, Potter. No, thank you. It was just, that'll be all. And I wandered out the room. And I said to the director, I feel like I should say something on my way out. He's so proud. He's so arrogant. He said, well, go ahead. Just say something. We'll do another one. And I said, well, what should I tell Daniel and, and uh, Richard? And he said, no, no, just do something. So there's Richard Harris in there. And he said, thank you, Mrs. That'll be all. And I turned around. I turned to Daniel, who was about you know, 12 years old, about that high. And I said, let us hope, Mr. Potter, we'll always be around. We'll just say it today. And, 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 and Daniel, it's not my favorite line. And then Daniel, not knowing what was happening, puffed his chest out, took a step towards me, and he went, don't worry, I will be. <laughs> And I thought, he's a bit good, isn't he? <laughs> Mine was uh, probably the, the line that summed up Neville so perfectly. And it also summed me up as well at that time. Just, why is it always me? I don't, we don't consider ourselves to be any different. I know we're lucky enough to be involved in these films, but of course we're the same as you. Of course we're just as talented as you and are as loving and caring as you. It's only by separating yourself and thinking that we're something different that leads to things like egos and uh, superiority and infant and, and self-awareness and, and a lot of the things that come with it. So uh, I'm, I'm equally, I'm, I'm as impressed with you as I hope you are with us and it's not, it's not a one-way street. Folks, I think that is a great note to end on. We are out of time, so I want to get a big 
huge round of applause for our panel. Ladies and gentlemen, Orlando, thank you very much for having us. Thank you all for joining us at a celebration of Harry Potter. Have a good night! I call this a spokes angel. <laughs>